Hi there, my name is Josh Brodus. I am an actor, author, and filmmaker in Los Angeles, California, and I wanted to thank The Table Read for having me on their episode. My latest book is called Moonrust, and it is a psychological thriller. My story was inspired by real life events that uh, were, I guess you could say near death. There were a couple times where I wondered if I would be alive the next day, and that was kind of what sparked the book. It led into a lot more, you know, storylines and um, messages, but I feel like that it all kind of started with one inciting incident in my life where I don't want to give anything away, but I had an experience camping that was unrivaled and very, very peculiar and uh, had me fearing for my life. So yeah, that is essentially what inspired the book. The main character, Anthony, is inspired by myself. And that's just because I had a firsthand account with what happened and was able to kind of vividly, visually, viscerally kind of see everything and put it into words. Uh, the other characters were, uh, you know, fabricated and inspired by friends. What I love about reading is the fact that you can be anywhere uh, without any electricity, you just need sunlight, <laughs> essentially, and you can be transported into any world. And the detail in that world can be so incredible and so immersive that you really don't notice when you're reading a book and when your mind is kind of feeding you all these visuals and like almost sometimes like sensory you get sense and you know touch and taste and if the book is really immersive and visceral it's like a time machine uh, and a teleportation system that can take you anywhere anytime and I think that's a really beautiful thing. Uh, that is a good question. Um, if you want to write a book, then you just got to start writing. Like, that's all that I have to say. Cause like a lot of people are like, oh, I want to write a book. I just, you know, I don't know how. And I started writing my books before I like read any how to books. It was after I had already gotten into the book that I was like, oh my God, I don't really know exactly what I'm doing. It's so, like, I read some books, uh, as like a guideline to kind of make sure that I was like hitting all of the marks. And what I had found was, is that they were there, they maybe needed some polishing, some more bringing out, some plot points, some more clear clarification of, you know, character development, things like that. But it was, you know, it was always present. And so it's like, you just have to make sure that you trust yourself, you trust the story. And then if you feel like you need some guidance or some help, reach out to those books. Or if you feel like you need to do that first, absolutely. But the most important thing that I would say, if you want to write a book, is just to get a pen and a piece of paper. You don't need a computer, you don't need a typewriter, you don't need anything but a pen and a piece of paper. Really just your mind. Make that story and then get it down somewhere, somehow, and then you're writing a book. Uh, my book will be available on all major outlets, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Walmart, uh, should be available at Target as well. Any major online booksellers will have Moonrest available. And it will also be available on my website with uh, signatures and special wrappings and uh, gift notes if that is preferred as well. And my website is joshbrodis.com, that's J-O-S-H-B-R-O-D-I-S.com. And that's for all of my books to uh, include in my past books as well. Uh, lastly, I just wanted to say uh, there is actually a film that is being released that coincides with the book release of Moonrest happening May 28th. That is this Sunday. So to bring a little bit more light to that topic, I've invited Jordan Henderson to join us and I have some questions from my followers of my social media so we can get a little bit more understanding behind the film and the book release. All right, folks, joining us here is CEO, founder, producer, and director of Planet Froth Productions, Jordan Henderson. Cool. Thanks, Welcome. Josh. This is really cool. Thanks for this. Yeah, thanks for being here. We just had a few questions from my followers about the Moonrest book slash film release. So, first question is, what about the book inspired you to make the film? Oh, yeah. Uh, well, you lent me a copy of your book that you wrote, so that was really cool. You wrote it during the pandemic, and I was like, wow, you've stayed busy. Um, and as I was reading it, you subtly let on, like, hey, there's actually a film idea here. Uh, this is all based on true events, and I want to recreate this down on a camping trip. Yeah, it was a place, <laughs> actually, that we had both been to before, mm -hmm. right? We exactly. Had, so we had camped at this place before, and then I had had uh, a couple 
strange encounters there. You had the really strange encounter that I guess inspired all of this, but mm. we've had very normal encounters there, very magical times there. Mm-hmm. Like, there was, there is an energy in this place that uh, does seem kind of mystical. So it was very believable that you would have this encounter when, as I was, as I was reading the book. I'm sure it was very like easy to picture it because <laughs> you've yeah. been there. <laughs> yeah, I was picturing it, and then because I was picturing it, reading the book, it it seemed to translate very well into film. I was picturing how the different shots would be, how it would be revealing different aspects, and then I love the mysterious aspect to it because that's something in cinema that's really fun to play with is to slowly reveal different parts of the story to the audience as they're experiencing it. The breadcrumbs, right? Exactly, the little trails. Awesome, great answer. Okay, the second question we have is, what challenges arose while shooting and what did you do to overcome them? I can think of a few. I would think the <laughs> most obvious one that comes to mind is this is like a, about a three mile hike in to the location and that's where we camp. So everything and not even when we get, we started shooting before we even got there. True. We On have, the way down. So we have our backpacks strapped, ready to go. Usually we've gone with a backpack filled with food and sleeping gear and all of this. Fun lights. And now I had no extra space or carrying power, uh, but now I had to replace some essentials with cameras and lights and bounce boards, uh, props. Costumes. <clears throat> and, a lot. We were front and back. Oh, yeah. Backpacks. It was... Yeah, that's true. <laughs> backpack of the front and the back and, and carrying, carrying stuff. Yeah, so that was a mm. huge challenge that I thought you did really good about overcoming just by being very prepared and organized and, you know, meticulous about the shots and stuff. Yeah, I guess the way to overcome that was to be very minimalist with this and very guerrilla. You know, I've gone down before, people have set up whole cheese grilling platters and we obviously mm. didn't have that we brought just enough to eat and then as far as filming goes we had a camera dslr camera that shoots 4k had a shoulder rig we had light panels that were battery powered so keeping everything small and tight helped it feasible to carry all that down it actually really helped keep us moving along because we're traversing over rocks to get shots and we're literally hanging over clips where I had to tie you Everything was on location. <laughs> yeah, and like actually tied into a rope to hang mm-hmm. off of a real cliff. Yeah, with the harness and everything. <laughs> well, the ca- and him also tied in with the camera. Right, and I, I do rock climb quite a bit, so I was assuring him it was safe. He's like, are you sure this little rope's gonna hold me? He's like, you're good. I've taken falls off of bigger cliffs. <laughs> yeah, I was, yeah, I was nervous. But well, it worked Understandably, <laughs> yeah. You had to be. You were falling to your death. <laughs> Um, yeah, and I guess we didn't really say, but I play a character in the film too, so that's oh, okay. yeah, a given. Um, Lead. <laughs> uh, well, all right. Question number three: uh, <laughs> What do you want the audience to take away after seeing Moonrest? Hmm. I think first and foremost, it's a really beautiful story that does have a deeper message in it. But I would want people to experience this movie enjoying it. Um, That's a big point of this, is to share this magical space, share this world that's been created. And the movie doesn't get in as deep as the story does about the depth with Tony's character. um, As the book. As the book does. But the, yeah, the book, you really see where his motivations are coming from. And you get to get a better sense of the type of person he is <clears throat> and so I want people to watch this film and without reading that backstory to still fall in love with this character and root for him and pretty much get as immersed as the character does in this world that he enters into mm-hmm. and then maybe buy the book to finish the story too right that's a, that I recommend it <laughs> you never know what you're gonna find if you you know do a little reading mm-hmm. so let's talk a little bit about the premiere Oh yeah, that's coming right up. <laughs> yeah, it's days away, so mm-hmm. the premiere is Sunday, May 28th, and that's actually mm-hmm. coinciding with the book release as well. So mm-hmm. the Moonrest the novel as well as Moonrest the film are both premiering on May 28th. Yeah, and that's uh, in West Hollywood. We just checked out the venue today actually, that's what brought me here, and it has a cool AV system, a whole great sound <clears throat> all around, and I'm excited for that. We're going to invite a lot of friends, some Hollywood type people and other creatives and it's just basically going to be like a night of celebration, night of fun because we can finally release both of these pieces of art. Yeah, it'll be really fun because we've been waiting for, was it three years? 
two years? Oh my gosh, yeah. I mean, end of the pandemic at least. <clears throat> so it's been a minute. Twenty twenty one, yeah. Well. Um, well, end of the end of the pandemic, but <laughs> <laughs> that era hey, of the pandemic. They don't require film uh, COVID tests on Mass. film sets anymore. Well, that is definitely an end of an era. Mm -hmm. SAG, I remember seeing that SAG notice. Yeah, but um, thank you so much for joining us. It was a pleasure working with you on the film. I'm so excited to premiere it with you this Sunday, as well as release the book and um, show it to all of you as well. I know it's been a minute since we've announced it, so it'll, it'll be, be fun a fun night. It. Yeah, and you're fun to collaborate with, and we just made another film. Oh, we did, too, yeah. So. Shameless plug. We just <laughs> felt, we just shot our second film, so right. um, not based on a book, but essentially <clears throat> a book in my mind. We kind of mm. turned into a film, so uh, sh many we, more to come. Should yeah. we drop that name or should we wait? Nah, that's what's tease. Okay, well, <laughs> more to come, but there is more to come. So thanks for joining us, Jordan, and uh, we'll see you on Sunday. Yeah. All right. Lobs rubbing.